Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is Squatch, a real-time character design demo. Hey there! So we're going to do something new that uh, I haven't done on here before. What I'm going to... it's going to be really rough and crude, and we're just going to do this like there's no... Like I have zero experience doing this and my videos should probably have better quality than they do. We're just gonna pretend like that's not a thing. Um, I'm going to attempt in real time, I'm just gonna record it in real time, no speeding up. Uh, if there's a cut, that's just cause maybe I had to step away for a second, but I'm not gonna try and hide any part of the process or include it in like a uh, time-lapse part. Um, what we're going to do here is try to design a character really quickly. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go from nothing to roughs to some sort of color key just so that we can kind of see that whole process and you all can see how long that could take me um, and uh, you could just kind of see that process a little bit more naturally than in a time lapse. So this video, if you're one of those people who likes a script or you like something to be more structured, that's not gonna be this video. So go ahead and move to the next one or move to the last one or whatever. Um, uh, for those of you who wish that I had more time to like do something like streaming, this is probably gonna be more for you. But either way, I am going to try and keep it short and compact. So let's start. What I decided to do was do a character like it could be for my uh, monster lineup that I've recently been doing, the, the monster character series. Now, this might not be because I'm not really like sitting down in isolation and processing an idea. What I did instead was I just thought of what's another monster type thing that I could do. And now we're just going to do, we're going to try and design that. Um, I decided to go with Bigfoot because I thought about some other characters and monsters and things like that, and honestly, none of them really interested me. Uh, but Bigfoot seems okay. Uh, as for my canvas size, this is uh, 3,000. It's uh, 3,000 this way. Pixels by uh, 3,600 pixels. Okay. Um, and DPI is irrelevant if I'm giving you pixels. So the if, if I were working in Photoshop, I would be working much larger, because I normally do. In fact, in Photoshop, I usually start with a 10,000 by 10,000 square, and then I do a bunch of rough sketches and stuff, and then I eventually crop it um, to something that's probably more like a 5,000 or a 6,000, but you know, procreate layer limits, that's the world we live in. So uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to try and talk through this, but I might go silent every now and then. What brush am I using? I'm using my Fat Pencil 2020, which is in the brush pack linked down below. I set it pretty large at the beginning because I just want to have like the feel of whatever it is I'm doing. Um, a lot of the time what you guys see in the Procreate videos that I post are in fact um, the full process, but I will go bigger with my brush sometimes, and maybe that doesn't end up somewhere in like the rough, uh, but it, it should show up somewhere in that time lapse because those are never edited or anything. Now, as for a character design, we're not even in the character design phase right now at this point. We are currently in what I refer to as the the base phase, which certainly has character design as kind of like part of it, but it's also a little bit more like almost like mannequin design. I'm just trying to figure out the, the body type. Now, don't get me wrong, that is part of the character design, um, but that is, uh, this right now is what I would almost call, like you know how people say, you gotta start somewhere. Let me turn on my do not disturb. I just realized I had that off, there we go. Um, the, uh, the people will say like you just need to put like anything, like any mark down and then you can start building off of that mark. It's similar to that. It's like, I don't even know if this character will end up being like this when all is said and done, but it is somewhere for me to start. Uh, you can also see that I'm, I'm drawing and then shrinking. And when I'm at the rough stage like this, it really doesn't matter how big anything is or how much I distort it because it's definitely gonna go through other layers of refinement. 
uh, like for instance the painting phase or the tighter line phase, that's when I'm at the point where I don't want to mess anymore with my uh, sizes or my resizing or anything like that. I was just like, hey, that foot's a little too big. And then I was like, all oh, right, it's Bigfoot. Um, so that's also why we're not going to be too precious about things like just stretching something like that. Um, now this character right now, I'm looking at him. He's looking a little, a little long leg, legged. Maybe we'll make these arms particularly huge. So the big thing that I want to look at when I'm doing the characters for the monster uh, lineup is I'm looking for, well, I, I try to do this in everything, but I'm looking for diversity. And then when we're dealing with monsters and we're dealing with such exaggerated proportions, like why not go all out with that and just really try to represent different, it's, it's interesting. You're, you're trying to represent different people through the monsters. Like that's really what I'm, I'm looking to do. Um, I think at the end of the day, you just want anything you, you want a bunch of characters that just appeal to a bunch of people. And even if it doesn't necessarily represent someone, if somebody ends up falling in love with that character, meaning it doesn't represent them, but they fall in love with that character anyways, like that's a win as well, right? So you just want characters that feel like they can resonate and, um, and all, at the same time try to represent people so that uh, people can feel uh, seen, right? Seen and heard and, and all those things, so. Um, the more that we see of that type of stuff in our media, the better things will be. Okay, so let's look at the body type that I've just like roughed out here. Um, I've just kind of roughed this out out of habits. Um, I did not rough this out with much thought just now as I was talking about other things, of course. Um, what do we think about this so far? So this might be the stage where I would say, okay, I, there's things I certainly like about it. Now, as far as sort of standard design, design stuff let's make a layer here i think that this this distance here would usually be longer um for like a quote unquote good design because we would try to get power um out of the character by giving him almost like this bigger body up here and i think that there's some aspect of that that feels a little bit more comfortable but i don't really know if i need that right now um i kind of like this body type that we've got right now because when you look up Sasquatch photos he's usually pretty muscular sometimes he's a little tubby um, but he usually has just like these equally length bits and almost like uh, it's it's almost like what I'm what I'm doing here in a subtle way is I'm like doing one of these things right where he's got like this big big ball body and then he comes down to big feet so in my head when I'm designing a character, this is what I'm kind of seeing. Even if the design of the character isn't this, this is kind of what I'm seeing in order to see where my exaggerations are. So if I turn this back on, let's actually, just so that we can. Okay, so if I size this uniformly, it's not gonna fit perfectly, right? But like you can start to see, especially if I put this under, you can start to see like what I'm looking at here, almost like a heat map kind of. It's like we've got big bulbous hand. This is diminished, big tummy. These legs are big because it, it just, I want him to feel like he's solid, but then, but they're definitely smaller than this then, right? And then he's got this tiny little head. Now, this is something that is interesting because he's Bigfoot, but all of my um, monster characters have, they go off the screen. So that means that when we're actually done done with this character, uh, the character will probably be, oh my god, I hate how touchy this function is. Uh, he will probably be something more like this, right? Depending on what we want to do with him. I mean, it'd be nice if he didn't go like off the screen. So maybe something like that. What if Bigfoot just has big feet, but he's actually not that big? So that would put like Larry, like bigger than this guy, right? Something like that. It would certainly put uh, Rolf bigger. But um, anyways, let, let's go ahead with this for now. Let's, let's say that this guy, he's not final, uh, but let's, let's start playing with this design now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, lower the opacity, 
and just right on top, I'm just gonna start more of the same, to be totally honest. I'm not gonna start getting in, into specifics, but what I do wanna start doing is I wanna start thinking about now him as a character, not just a body type anymore. And I wanna think about uh, the archetype we're dealing with, which is the Sasquatch. I just somehow undid a layer. Um, we, we, we wanna deal with the fact that he's a Sasquatch. And is there a funny, interesting, cool, et cetera, et cetera, thing that we can do with the archetype of a Sasquatch. So I'm going to try and ramble through some of that while I play with some of these shapes. So a Sasquatch is in the woods, right? He, he, it, she, they, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a Sasquatch person, so I'm not, I, I'm not up to date on the Sasquatch like uh, gender, sexual dimorphism, and, and things like that. Um, see, I'm not in love with this exactly here, the way this goes out. And not not entirely, but anyways, let's let's keep going. Let's just keep going. Let's get this a little bit more like this. I, th I feel like his head should be maybe a little bigger, or better yet, let's make it a little taller, and get like his cranium up there. And now we can start thinking about giving him that kind of like big Sasquatchy vibe in the head. That big headed shit. Um, and you can see I'm being like super, super messy right now because I'm just searching. Um, so anyways, so they're, they're in the woods. Uh, is, it, is it funny or cool if he's like a lumberjack? Maybe, maybe not. Is it funny if he's domesticated? He actually just lives in the city now and he kind of wishes... He was still out in the woods. Is, is that cool? Um, is that something that we can like kind of start with? I don't know. Put a belly button somewhere like there. They're usually really hairy. Are there any jokes that we can do about them being hairy? And then if this is part of that monster lineup too, I'm looking for something that might be a little glowy about them, right? And so since we've got a character who doesn't really have he doesn't usually have the reputation of having like, you know, big claws. I mean, there are some versions of Sasquatch that have big claws, but they're more like apes, right? Uh, I mean, they're not apes. Sorry if you're offended out there, if you're like a Sasquatch person and you're like, they're not apes, they're something very specific. I, I don't know what that is, so, um, so sorry. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's, I don't like the way that head ended up going because I don't like what it did to his body. Uh, when you do a larger head, it makes the character um, smaller, actually. So we're gonna go back to this type of a head. I don't know if I wanna do like the Harry Henderson's kind of head, actually. I'm gonna undo everything I just did, and I'm just erase it faster. Um, I kinda like maybe what I already had. What if I, what if it's something a little bit more, you can still get the jaw going out, you can still get the ear, uh, the, I, I always like a longer neck, and the characters from this have a pretty good long neck, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. I'm not against this as a body type. Remember I said I wasn't going to make this necessarily for sure one of the characters, but... Okay. Okay, we've got, we've got something that feels body typey. So now I'm going to select both of these and group them and duplicate them and flatten them. Turn that off and then I'll just lower the opacity. And now let's start getting into some character stuff. I'm gonna keep it rough and I'll just keep them full body for this. I'm not gonna bother with the like uh, putting them off page um, because we're not gonna go super clean with any of this anyways. Uh, let me get my line in a good place, okay? So, okay, we're gonna get some neck in here. Now, Sasquatches usually have like a pretty big beard element. So like, what if, what if he has this jaw that goes out like this, but then his beard kind of comes down? And I'm gonna actually use these stray lines that I did here to inspire something a little bit more like that. We're gonna erase away, gotta get a smaller eraser here. What eraser is this? Oh, it's a turpentine brush. 
I actually, when I'm when I'm keeping things simple and rough, and I'm just sketching like this, I just use the clean eraser because it's like, you know, 100% full bore. You're going to erase what you're trying to erase, kind of thing. Okay, so I've given myself very little room for a face here. I mean, his face basically can exist like in there, but that's okay because the type of character that we're trying to do. I mean, if you look at some Sasquatch pictures, their head is like this big, but their face is just like right there. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and capitalize off of that. So I'm gonna get like a little nose in here and we're not gonna do like a full mustache. I'm looking, I do have some Sasquatch reference open just to make sure I don't veer too far away from the general Sasquatchiness. Um, in fact, this one's interesting. I'll kind of keep that up. It's, it's different than like the Harry and the Hendersons one. Um, so there's usually some degree of like there's like the beard almost goes right up to here and then becomes like the hair. I mean, that's the way like mankind is too, but is it interesting if he's kind of a hipster? I don't know. I don't know. I'm lost. I'm lost with this character. We're searching for the character. It's kind of like that classic thing of like the sculpture was already there. I just freed it. It's not the same, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, there's a character out there. There's a Sasquatch character for us out there, and we're trying to find him. Let's see. Do we like him giving almost like a dog nose kind of? I'm not against that. That's for sure. And then all the characters from this have like glowy eyes, at least to some degree, right? Maybe it's 100% of them. I don't even know. So let's just give them like little dot eyes that will glow. Okay. Okay, let's see. What are, we, what are we doing so far? Okay, not great, not great, but we'll try to get there. Okay, what else is interesting, <coughs> excuse me, about a Sasquatch? We, we almost never see their ears in some of uh, the, the reference that I'm looking at, but I like ears. Ears are fun to me. So we're gonna do something maybe that's almost kind of like a dog ear, something like this. So his skull now is very strange, right? That's fine. These characters are very strange. Okay, let's come back to the head. The head, I think, is fine for now. It's not good, but it's fine for now. Now for the body. What's the story that we want for this Sasquatch? Just for the sake of like moving forward here in this, uh, this sort of one-shot video, let's say that he, let's go with the more domesticated side of things. Let's say he lives in the city um, and he runs something, like a video rental store or like, what would a Sasquatch, a shoe store. Yeah, but that's not cool. Like that's funny. That's like a, that's like a schoolhouse rock kind of funny. That's not like, you know, a badass from uh, this kind of a story kind of thing. So how about this? How about he is actually, <coughs> excuse me, um, he's actually a uh, weapon supplier. Let's just go like hardcore like that. Um, no, 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 he's a, he's a weapons maker. Uh, that's actually with his body type, kind of making him like the makers from uh, the Darksider series, but... We'll, uh, we'll see if there's ways that we can get around that because we're also going to make him modern, right? Now, when I think of modern maker type people, I think of um, like how a lot of tattoo artists these days, they'll wear like big aprons, not aprons, but maybe it's an apron. Oh no. Have I, have I said the wrong thing? Uh, it's like a workman's thing, right? Where it's like, this hides his body a little bit though, doesn't it? But you know what I mean, like a, one of these workman's things. And then let's go a little hipster with him. Why not? Just a little. And give him some tightly rolled sleeves. We'll do that. And then uh, he's going to be hairy. Uh, we'll do the classic thing where like the hair kind of ends at the fist. So this is like skin. Okay, and we're not gonna do any other fancy thing right now with this part of them. We will add some 
like fur tufts though, just to get some energy out of this design, some sort of like pop, some interest out of the design instead of him just being kind of like a hairy dude. Uh, then on the same thing on this side, we'll just get this fur to come down. Okay, we'll close that off. And then this is a shirt, so we don't need to worry about any kind of special shit there. Let's have him have a fully collared, fully buttoned up shirt, like it's buttoned to the top. You know, he's, he's one of those guys. Um, and then down here, he doesn't have, what would be an interesting thing? Is that like spats? Is that what I'm thinking of? That go on shoes? Yeah, kind of like that. I'm Googling spats now on a different screen, just in case you're wondering what's going on. Yeah, and then they've got like, they can have a little strap underneath. So let's go with that route. Let's do that. Cause he's got these big feet, but he's not completely without, uh, he's not completely like without uh, class or whatever, right? So it's just it's something like this. Okay, it goes over the top, toes. Okay, is this cool? Like, not really. So we don't have anything cool really happening with this character yet. In fact, let me, I'm also gonna type tattoo apron. Cause tattoo aprons, like the modern tattoo apron is like pretty hipstery and that kinda, that kinda fits. Um, I think they look cool. I'm not besmirching like hipstery tattoo like things like that. But um, I just think that it, it kinda fits like what we might be doing with this character. Okay, I've got, I've got some sort of a reference now that's like, okay. Um, okay, so what are, what, are we, what are we at now? We are at a character who looks okay. Let's merge this and let's lower the opacity on that a little bit more and let's lower this. And what is one thing that's happening here that might not be great? Well, he's just kind of like looking off into the distance. So let's, let's start changing him around. See, now that I've got this character here, I can kind of start, I mean, he's not that great, but I can start playing with him a little bit. So we've got some shapes here. He's looking a little bit more at us now. Well, it might not look like he's looking at us yet, but we'll get there. Problem is, of course, this covers up his collar a little bit more, but that's okay. Let me click back over to Sasquatch. Yeah, let's go bigger with the Sasquatchness. Let's go like this, right? And then let's have it a little bit more like kind of spiky and wild. That's feeling a little better. Now he's gonna have this type of action because we want this fur to go all around. Okay, we'll do this. We'll get that fur to go there. Okay, that's already feeling better. Problem is someone like yourself, Mr. or Mrs. sitting on the internet watching this, that might not be the clearest sketch. So let's go ahead and try to clarify this a little. So we're gonna have this and this, something like that. We're going to get the eye, the other eye. Oh no, I don't like that cheekbone. I like it to be smooth actually on this. And then, uh, we do want to make sure his brow is somewhat accented. I do like having him have more of the wrinkle action. Let's have him maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe. I feel like he'd be played by, is it David Harbour? I feel like an asshole for not knowing that. Well, I mean, it's not like he's my friend or anything, but okay. Let's, uh, let's not have this go all the way there because it's creating some visual confusion. So let's instead have this come down. <coughs> Excuse me. Have this go like this. Okay, so we can keep this hair going a little wild. Have the hair go out. Keep the dog ears. Now we need to establish what we need to be better about this here. So dog ear, something like that. 
pair, something like that. Okay, uh, so now we've got this. This is uh, this is like hatchy bullshit. So we, we want we want a little bit more volume there. So let's get that going. Okay, this can go. Let's have him get a little bit of a facial hairy type thing, and then we'll have this come down. There we go. Get a little bigger with everything. A little more hair with everything. So now he's kind of he's kind of buried in amongst all of this. He's got this little bitty face right there. Okay. Now I'm feeling like the shoulders can come out just a little bit more to help that breathe. Now part of the reason why you guys might be seeing me do more sketching and revisions and stuff like that than I normally do is because I'm doing this as an exercise almost like as if this were a paid gig where it's like I didn't just sit down and want to draw this somebody asked me to draw this so in this case I wanted to do a video but did I want to draw a Sasquatch like sort of but I didn't already have the idea other characters that you see me do from the series, I actually had the idea kind of already clear in my head, and it was like, oh cool, now I just need to put it to paper. This is a lot more searching overall. Uh, so let's say that this is this shirt is plaid, just because of course it is. And then we will, let me click back over to my apron, ref. Let's go with something like this. The ref that I'm looking at, this guy is like super fit, and he's not, he's not big, so it's kind of funny. Okay, let's go with these big hoops that they have in the in the reference with these clips. Okay, that won't be the clearest thing, but maybe maybe if I had time to really you know take this a little bit further, we would get to some some clearer clips and everything. But let's just call that good for now. Uh, one thing I want to get right that's in this reference though is there's like a big ass pocket in the reference. So let's just straight up do that pocket. Okay, so his tummy curves this way, so now we need to change that curve. Okay, we'll have lots of stitching stuff happening. There's some rivets in the uh, reference. There's also kind of like a symbol in the reference. He's got like a plus on his chest, which is kind of cool. It might be cool to reserve this area for some sort of a symbol, if that's like a, a neat little fashion choice. Uh, and then if I look at some of the reference, is there anybody here that has, there's no like belt built into these. They're all like straight up just aprons that get pulled in the back. So this part gets pulled in the back, but there isn't anything that looks like, oh, here we go. Here's one with a belt. Okay, we're going to do a belt because that helps me uh, design wise, just kind of cut the midsection, which is really a good thing that we want. Let's go ahead and add a stitch down the middle too. That'll be good. Um, we'll add a big pocket, but then we'll split a little bit the apron. Okay, uh, pocket right, big pocket. So it goes like this, something like that. I'm looking at multiple references from multiple uh, aprons now. And so I'm kind of merging them all together into a master apron. Okay, not the best design still, but maybe we can take it somewhere interesting by the end of this. I don't know how long I've been recording. So again, I'm, I warned you that this could drone on. So if this is droning on and you're like, oh God, I warned you. Um, I don't really like the spats as is. I feel like, I feel like maybe even though we've got this guy sort of sitting in that hipstery vibe, maybe it's not working exactly how I would want it to. So let's instead have him just have jeans. He just, you know, he rolls them up though. There we go. That we'll, we'll go with a nice roll up. It adds a good break. It fits the hipstery thing. You know, actually, if, if we didn't have the apron, I might even do like shorts because that would be just funny. This also, by the way, allows us to get some of the, the hair coming down here or the fur. This would technically be fur. Now I have a lot of characters already in this lineup that have like claws, so I don't really want to do claws. So for right now, we're just going to keep it. He's got like, maybe his toes are like, a, his toenails are a little overgrown, but they're not 
crazy. Again, it doesn't matter anyways because if this went to final, he would get pulled off the page. But So let's actually not spend too much time on the feet even though he's a Bigfoot and that would be important. This is like all bad, but it's cool. We'll just... Tighten it up a little bit. Okay, still not perfect, but that's fine. That's fine. He's a big foot. He's supposed to be a little weird in the feet department. Okay, last things. Is there anything that we can do to make him look more like he makes stuff? Uh, for sure. Let's get some sort of like, um, that was my pencil landing on the table. Let's get some sort of like uh, welding goggles on him. Ooh, those are cool looking. I was actually hoping to find some welding goggles though that were like really unique. Like maybe those types of goggles you see sometimes that just have like the slits in them. But all welding goggles are more or less the same. Uh, let's put, let's go like this and then get the framing for it and then because obviously we want to avoid this character looking like Hellboy since he's just got two goggles, since he's just got goggles on his head. Um, there, what I'll do is I'll kind of build out the slightly more techy aspect of that. Okay, that helps. Anything else? I could put big gloves on him and then have the fur coming out of the gloves. So like that edit would look like we've got gloves that go like this. And then the fur kind of gets stuffed. I like that actually. Let's go back to here. I could do this non-destructively where I just go in and like mask this or duplicate it but we'll just we'll just go with something like this yeah i actually like that quite a bit let's get this glove in and then there's some extra furry stuff cool okay uh again not a perfect design but something that i am happy to say we could do something with this maybe he's not one of the absolute main cast but it's like you know go see go see squatch and he'll help you with whatever. So let's take the, what do we got here? This is the rough. Okay, so I'm just merging some things now so that I get it all together, group. Okay, now we will duplicate and flatten that one more time. Turn that off and lower the opacity on this. I'm gonna, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna do one more clarifying pass where I just kind of make sure everything is as good as it could be. So let's make, let's give him a little bit of that dog nose we said that we liked before. Get his eyes in there. We'll give him like little bags under his eyes. We'll push his philtrum, we'll curve forward to emphasize the fact that his mouth is kind of like arched up like that, like he's kind of, you know, like that type of a vibe. Um, we'll get, we'll sell the, uh, these little lines in his face and then we'll build the kind of side mustachey part off of that. Here we'll start, actually I want to do that the other way. We want to get this to feel like it's connected and organized, but still wild. So there we go, that feels pretty good. I do like the idea of it being like really, it's coming forward quite a bit. So we wanna maintain that vibe. We'll have this hair start to kind of go to the sides, have this come down. We wanna always make sure we get that hair kind of curling back up so that it is as dynamic as we can get it. Uh, we have this break where his ear, his weird kind of dog ear, lamb ear, whatever this is, can come out. Uh, we will, I am lightly tracing kind of this line, but I'm doing it over the screen so that I can kind of line up this ear roughly. 
Okay, then here we go. We'll just do some quick circle template shit. And I'll just copy and paste that. Okay. I like keeping this the way it is because my gut reaction would be to put like two big separate goggles, but then that would start pushing things. I already mentioned you kind of look like David Harbor. 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 Can't talk today. It's been a day. It's been a hell of a week. Um, and then we'll we'll have this come up. So his hair, it's almost like without his goggles on, he's always slicking back the sides of his hair, but everything else is still like a goddamn mess. There we go. Put some, some more interest there. Some hair. Actually, let's not curve that so much so that it doesn't look like something else, like horns or something. Okay, so now I'm happy with the way this guy's face is. We had some hairy, <laughs> we had some hairy moments in there. Let's merge these two together and just look. So this, let's start at the beginning just so we can see from whence we came. So this was where we started and then we did this and then we did not exactly this. We did, yeah, this which is not a character yet. It's, well, I mean, it is, I guess, but it's a bad character. Uh, then we turned his head with this rough sketch here, which we then turned into this, which we are now working on getting clearer with this sketch. In fact, I probably don't need to really clarify anything else. We know that these are loops. We know they have like a clip attached to them. So yeah, let's, let's say for now that this is all we need. Um, so what I'll do is I'll duplicate these lines and I'll just erase away the part that we just cleaned up just so that we can, actually, I don't, I, don't, I kind of like it still there. So let's just leave it. Never mind. I lied. Okay. Now we will do some flats or not flats, keys, color keys, because I'm calling them color keys because that way I don't have to say that they are like clean in any way. At least that's kind of what I'm getting at there. Now, what colors do we want to do for this guy? What are the colors of some of the other characters? We've got as a primary color of like the body or the main color. Um, if you look at like, for instance, Hazel's kind of like purpley red. Um, we don't have a character that's blue and furry. We have Zola who's blue. So let's go blue. That feels good because he, I want him to be colorful, right? I want him to really pop quite a bit. Again, it's not pop like pop is such like a lame thing, but um, it's like a lame thing to say. Let's go with on the purple side of blue and go like here. Switch to the new turpentine. We'll just do that to keep everything messy. So first things first, the fur is his like main color. So let's get that kind of blued in there. You'll notice the background is still white. We'll come to the background in a minute. Now the um, Giselle has big gloves similar to this because she's a scientist. So she's got very scientist-y uh, colored gloves and the fact that they're black rubber. He would probably have something similar, at least in color. I'm not gonna say whether or not they would be, what material they would be, but just from a color blocking perspective, they would probably be dark. But it might also be more interesting to give him like, I don't know, some bright color that goes really well with his fur. So I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be that clean. I just want it to be a little under control. So let's go with something that's like a slightly orangey yellow. Let's get a little brighter. Let's go a little orangier. Okay. And then we will make his gloves that color. Get them real colorful. This cast is colorful, very deliberately colorful. And I want to make sure that we, especially after the last character that I finished that I posted, which was Hector, um, he is very, 
he's got he's got some bright colors in his green gem and his and his purple like stake weapons, but he he himself is like all black basically, right? So we want to try and fix that. So since we've already got so much color happening here, it would probably be good to go with something that is desaturated and dark for the apron. I mean, most of these aprons are pretty desaturated and dark. They're usually like jean material or leather or something like that. So we'll just do this. Okay. So at this point, when I'm doing flats, I'm thinking, okay, I'm starting to see this character come together. Does this, does this work? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know if it works, but it's not going to work at this point anyways, because you still have so many things to color that it could still like get out of control on you. Uh, one thing that I will maintain from my reference is they were sort of like these gold, these gold clasps, um, these like dark gold rings and clasps. So we're going to keep that, which means the rivet is the same color. Let's say there's rivets here too, because they're pockets that I had my do not disturb on. I do. Okay. Whatever. Anyways. Um, and then, uh, now we want to figure out his skin, which is probably just going to be desaturated. Let's go ahead and grab that purple that we already had, bring it a little bit more blue and desaturate it like that. We'll see if that actually works or not. Once we get it laid in here. Uh, yeah, that's too dark, but we'll, we'll put it in anyways, just to see. I think his face isn't going to read well enough if it's that dark. His hands would be fine because his hands take up. Oh, right. His hands are already covered by the gloves. His feet are fine. Oh, right. His feet would be off screen. But anyways, his feet and hands would be fine if he took his gloves off because they take up so much more space. Uh, they become the dominant block, but the, the dominant color block. But with his face, we want people to be able to like see where the face is. So I would argue that we need to go brighter with that. So let's go like that. A little more saturation, a little brighter. There we go. That makes me feel happier. Uh, let's color pull, color pick. I don't know why I said color pull. I've never referred to that as a color pull. We're going to do a color pull now. Um, okay. So we've got face, we've got gloves. Uh, I honestly, right now, just looking at this, I don't know if I know what color I want the shirt to be. Uh, my gut reaction is to do a little bit of like a turquoisey green that's like desaturated and dark but once we actually lay this in here we'll know whether or not that was the right call i'm not going to say that i can always with 100 percent accuracy like name the color that something should be but i can i i'm fairly confident that once i've put the colors down i can look at them and then adjust them to something that that fits well And before we return to that shirt, I am also going to put in the pants because the pants are going to be like a dark jean anyways. I want them to basically be, you know, that, that just dark blue jean color. He's so colorful. We're drawing attention to his hands through the bright yellow. Um, we've got the... Uh, everything else is kind of pulled back, which is good. His big ass hands when he's gesturing to you should be probably the most important thing. Uh, let's quickly just color cycle the shirt and see if there's, yeah, that's already feeling better. See, I like that too, because what's happening is this is warm, this is warm, this is warm, and then it's all playing off nicely with the cool blues. Uh, I, I'm not saying this is perfect though. We should find, oh, the purple's kind of nice too. Yeah, let's go with purple since purple is kind of like that awkward, cool, cool, warm, little more purple there. Okay, let's go with that. In the interest of moving on, uh, the reference that I have for the goggles, these uh, goggles are green and dark and desaturated like that. So I'll do that. and the strap is black and the goggles, the like goggles themselves are black. Since I'm not actually flatting this, I'm just gonna put this all on the same layer. 
Okay, it's also got some like knobby things on the top. I'll just add those in in the color key right here. And then of course we would try to do something really interesting for his color skin variation. So I'm gonna go to like over here somewhere, select his skin and then switch to just like a soft brush like this and just do something like that. Maybe something on his nose that's kind of like that. Something on the inside of his ears that's kind of like that. And then lower the opacity on it to taste. So maybe something like that. We'll darken around the eyes. For that, I'll just color pick it. Okay. Go a little more purple. Okay, got some darkening in there. And now we're gonna make the glow. What what should his glow be? Well, we're not gonna fig we're not gonna do glow on any part of his body right now. That just wouldn't make sense. It would feel really forced at this point. So what I'll do is I'll just do it in his eyes, which should be more than enough. Uh, in order to make sure that we're not getting held back by our lines, I'll just put this on top. My gut is to say that it's gonna be a blue like this. Keep him icy. Maybe that's tied in somehow. Okay, cool, I like that. Let's grab all of this for a minute. Or maybe not that and that. Just scoot them down a little bit. And then I'll duplicate this and blur it. And then I will duplicate that again. I'll move one underneath and then I'll switch this one to an add. Lower its opacity just a little bit. Actually, I'm not gonna lower its opacity too much, but I am gonna go in and shear off the top of this just a little bit. I don't want him to look like he's like spooked or something. Cool. And then the last thing that I might do to make sure that I'm in here selling, selling him enough that I'm interested in finishing him is I will come over here and just put like some highlighty type stuff on the metal. Lower that opacity like just a little bit. Put it on other things as well. Because when you're gonna go paint it then, you need to have things to be excited about. So sometimes it's good to get excited like at this point, right? Just do something like that. I'll knock it way back though. Something like that. And then uh, we'll also throw in, I don't know, some dark color for his toenails just to draw attention to that. He's got these big ass toenails. There, okay. So something like that. Uh, if I wanna continue this process and uh, really get the look kind of that ends, that, that's going to be in the final, what I'll do is I'll turn everything off and I'll just go over here to add copy canvas. I'll put right here a new layer and I'll say paste. And then I'll select my purple that I use for everything in this series. Uh, that's all the shadow that I use and I'll fill. Okay, there we go. And then I'll say, I'll switch this to a multiply. Uh, I will also duplicate this because it's good to have a solid around. I will erase here. Okay, and then we'll take uh, and do a fill, select, clear. I'll blur this so it encroaches a good amount. And then I'll switch this to a multiply. I'll select this again, select the inverse and clear. Last thing that we wanna make sure is like, this guy's eventually gonna be on a dark background. Let's get him that dark background. Let's find a color that works. Find something. Red's kind of nice. Purple's kind of nice. Reddish purple, nah, too much. Let's go with something kind of greeny. I don't know why that works for me right now. Okay, and then uh, what I'll do with these just to make sure that I'm I'm 
getting kind of the vibe I want is I'll just put like a, a black here like this and then I'll sample uh, this and go like really saturated and do something like that and then just lower the opacity on that so that it feels kind of like how it would be. Uh, since I'm on this this video I'll also actually let's do it with the rough ink it'll be faster. Let's just do some lines so that we can previs what the rim light could end up looking like. Probably also do some play in the fur just to get something kind of interesting happening there, but. Okay, we will select it and we will fill with like a bright, whoops, bright orange. Fill, blur, duplicate, put underneath, set this to add. Yeah, and lower the opacity on that quite a bit. You know, something like that so that we can start seeing what that whole look uh, might end up being. Although I do feel like he's getting a little too overpowered by that. So let's just give him a quick boost. With an overlay. We're not gonna do overlay, we're gonna do an add. Wait, where are we? This one, yeah, okay. I was like, what layer am I on? Something like that, just a. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Anyways. So yeah, so there's a Sasquatch character that I might end up using. Maybe I'll put some more work into him, which is actually the process that I would normally use anyways, right? I would come in uh, later and I would think about him and I would put him on my phone or something and stare at him for a while and then eventually say like, okay, yeah, I, I, I can do this character. I, I think this character does what I need him to do. I'm still very undecided about the color of the background though, aren't I? Yeah, something like that maybe. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I don't know how much time that was. That was probably longer than it should have taken me. Uh, but since I was talking at the same time, it was uh, a bit much. I hope you enjoyed seeing sort of the rough process in real time. And so now what I would do is I would start doing the more tedious job of like flats and planning and then eventually moving into all the other stages. So, so thanks for watching. I don't know if we're going to take this character any further, but it was fun to do this little breakdown. Uh, I know this was all kind of an interesting format, but I thought it'd be good to try since people have been asking about the whole streaming thing and whether or not I can do more just real time stuff. So I hope you dug it. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like or subscribe if you don't already, and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.